today. I'm going to get out the way because uh, Mr. Thomas is bringing some firepower. He's uh, he's basically sitting on uh, Nuke in the Zoom call today with uh, the caliber of the young lady who's going to be speaking. Um, her background is education. Uh, and actually, actually, she's got a real interesting background when it comes to the, to the, the business. Because, you know, sometimes a lot of us have lost people in this business and uh, think, oh, crap, they would have been a good one. Dang it. The timing just wasn't right. And for her to see that in her own life and to come on and go from not seeing ACN as something that could benefit her and her family for, for generations uh, and then falling away and then coming back and literally just like this i mean she's got like one of those stories that you just like around the campfire and you're just like and that's what the blessing is what she brings to the table uh, uh her love of god and family and what she does for others it speaks for itself um i'm gonna tell you what <clears throat> if i had five friends like this young lady right here i would die a rich man i would die a rich man if I had five people like this on my team, I'd never have to work again. <laughs> never have to. Me and Sam Foster would be hanging out at the mall, drinking coffee, and just talking to people for fun. And it was good to see you at that Tahoe, Sam. I really enjoy your company, boss. But guys, uh, I'm just going to let her go because uh, she's ready to get start firing. And uh, she's come to arm. She's loaded. She's ready to rock. And... Uh, my appreciation to a, a young lady who I consider who our first meeting was a blessing. And uh, from there, I've continued to be blessed. And I just look forward to taking notes and seeing what she's going to add to my life today. And uh, love her dearly and Miss Nicole Woods. Man, praise God. I'm telling you, I love you dearly too. It our our interaction, our first, you know, uh time meeting, it was phenomenal. And you know, I felt like you were already hanging out with Sam, just talking to people for fun because <laughs> that's kind of how it happened. You know, I'm so excited, uh, you guys, to be on this call today. Um, we are in, can you believe we're in the middle of May? It's crazy. This is past the middle of May, it's the 18th. So we are almost done. It is, you know, it's, it's booming down. And so, you know, the year already will be in 2023 in just a moment. And I'm so, you know, uh, flabbergasted by, you know, but time happens. It comes anyway, you know, and I'll be a, I'll be a mother of a, of a, of a ninth grader. So pray my strength in the Lord. Um, you know, my goodness, but I want to go ahead before we get started, as always, whenever I, I'm, I'm asked to do these calls, I want to go ahead and lift God up in prayer, uh, because that's who's the head of my life. So let's do that before we get started. Father God, Lord, we thank you for the 18th of May. This day of 2022 will never happen again. So we praise your name and we give you honor and glory. And we just thank you for waking us up this morning to be fresh and new. Now, since you already did that, Father, we're asking that as we give you all honor and glory, that we may do something to not just make you proud, but to instill something positive in the life of others. So we praise your name in advance. We thank you in advance and we can't wait to see your face. In Jesus name, we do pray. Amen. All right, you guys, let's get it and go. So, you know, I've been having different topics every, uh, every time I come on here. And so the topic for today, if you have your handy dandy notebook, ready, set, go. The topic for today is act as if. Isn't that something? act as if. And so it's a, it's a lot of things that's encompassed into acting as if. So look, we are going to act as if. This is so amazing when we're able to just go out and act as if. You are attracting what you actually want into your life. People don't understand that or may not always know it. Act as if. And I pulled my slide up too. I, I did it too fast. So here's the deal. When you act as if, that doesn't mean that you're being like super phony or, you know, something that somebody can't follow. You know, you're actually setting a precedence. So when you act as if, though, what you're actually doing is you're attracting what you want. 
That's why I remember when we talked about doing that, uh, doing that um, vision board and you're actually putting into motion what you want. When you act as if you're already do being and have what exactly you want in life, in your business, in your marriage, with your children, in every aspect of your life, if you act as if you are already calling it into existence with the universe. So look, let's take a look at the next slide as well. This is something that I heard <clears throat> years ago when I got started in ACN. And uh, my mentor said it again last night. And I was like, oh my goodness, I got up when we were done, we were on a leadership call, I incorporated it in this training today. If being who you are could get you what you want, you would already have it. Isn't that crazy? Think about that. If being who you are could get you what you want, you would already have it. It would be ready, set, go. It would already be uh, in existence. So if being who you are could get you what you want, you would already have it. So you have to understand that there's certain things that we have to do in order to continue to be great. There's certain things that we have to have in order to be great, but it's already right here. So you just have to follow a pattern that's already set in order for you to win. So <laughs> in saying that, what are you willing to change? What are you willing to change in order to accomplish, to be able to have, do and be what you want? Are you willing to change your lifestyle, your eating habits? Are you, a willing, are you willing to change uh, gossiping? Are you willing to change being your word? Are you willing to change uh, who you hang around? Like, you know, you heard Chris say the five people that you hang around. Are you willing to change that to be able to get what you want? That's so super significant. If you change what you want, in order to change what you want, you have to change who you are. That's what it's saying. Change what you want or change who you are. There's no in between. You can't just do one. You can't say, oh, I want to change what I want and not become a better person. Not, you know, hang around people who are, are just like you and or better than you. Remember I said last week, you don't want to be the sharpest tool in the shed. You know, in order to change what you want, you have to change who you are. You can't be in a mindset of complacency or just always looking and understanding that, you know, just maybe it'll come. You can't, uh, you can't be the one who everybody understands always talks the talk, but never walks the walk. In order to change what you want, you have to change who you are. That's so super significant. And it starts with your mindset. Everything starts and falls with mindset. That's really it. So let me talk to you about the have and the have nots. You know, the difference between those that have and those who have not are the have not say, there's no way I can, whatever it is. There's no way I can lose weight. There's no way I can become a senior vice president. There's no way that, you know, I can create more time with my children and my family. I'm super busy. There's no way that I can, you know, however, the have say, how can I not have more time with my children? What do I need to do that? How can I not lose weight? That's it. There's the difference between the haves and have nots. And I always send my group every single evening, we do a global call and on the global call, you know, I look to see on my team who's there and I send them an I thought is something that I, you know, I coined, I actually, um, I actually patented the word I thought uh, be, for us iPhone users, for you Android users, I don't have an A thought my bad, sorry, but I have, I thought, and so it says one of the, I thoughts that uh, one of my uh, regional directors, her brother is a doctor and it's so phenomenal. We're going to talk about him on Saturday training, but uh, uh, something that he says is most of the limits we face are self-imposed. And that's something, some of the limitations, most of the limitations that you have in your life it's you, you self-impose them, you spoke them into existence, you create the barriers that happen that keep you from being able to step over to the other side. 
You know, it's not someone else. You know, when it's uh, your business and you're told to let's go out and let's get you qualified within the first 24 hours. And then you come up with reasons and excuses why you cannot. That's self-imposed. You can't be involved in something, not support yourself in it, and then think that somebody else will. But we put the limitations on ourselves through the self-talk that we're having, through the conversations that, you know, we have right here. So most of the limits that we face, self-imposed limitations on ourselves. We need to break that chain. It's instantaneous as well. So when faced with perceived impossible, what's your typical response? Do you run or do you fight? Do you uh, cower down or do you battle up? How do you respond when there's some, uh, some impossible feat that you feel like cannot happen? What do you do? Who do you call? What game plan do you put in place? Or do you just let the chips fall where they may and then say to yourself, oh, that was God's will? Isn't that crazy? People do that. Oh, that, it was God's will that such and such happened this way. He didn't say to fight your own battle, but he also asked you to be a part of your own rescue. So what do you do? Do you run or do you fight? Write that down and really ask yourself that question on what do you do? And if you want, if you're tired of running, let's figure out what it's going to take to fight. And the great thing here is this platform is full of people that want to see you win. This platform is full of people that want to fight with you. This platform is full of people like you or better than you, not saying they're better than you, but they're doing something greater than you are right now. And you want what they have. You want better than what they have, but you got to put in the work. So are you going to run or are you going to fight? So now you got to determine whether or not you're going to act as if. Act as if you already are. If you want millions of dollars in your bank account to be able to move and shake a little differently to help the community, to take care of parents and to take care of yourself, you can already act as if you are. You don't have to dress like you don't have a million dollars. You can. And that doesn't mean you have to go out and spend more than what you have to look the part. You already are. So act as if. Act as if it's impossible to fail. Even though failure is a part of success, act as if it's impossible. And then if you just happen to, what is the learning lesson that you're going to get from it? Act as if you're ready for that learning lesson that's going to come from the fight. Look, act as if. Don't wait on no promotion to qualify you. You're already a senior vice president. The pen just hasn't caught up. The title just hasn't caught up. You can act as if you're already a senior vice president in your business, in your life. You can take charge. You don't need somebody to tell you that you're a winner. Tell yourself you're a winner. Look in the mirror and tell yourself you're a winner. Take your, your soap and write it across your mirror. I am, and what are you? a winner. What are you? Successful. What are you? Creative. What are you? A boss. What are you? A child of God. What are you? And continue to act as if. Even in your preparation mode, other people will see you. It's attractive when you act as if. It's attractive when you begin to live out the life that God has already designed for you. It's attractive. You will gravitate to people and even pull people to you even when you're acting as if because it hasn't even caught up yet. And so when it comes, guess who's already ready? Act as if. Act as if you already won. Act as if you've already, you know, in this business, you've heard Rick Provenzano reading your biography of whatever it is for regional vice president or, or, or RVP platinum and whatever, all out of the above. 
act as if you already won and you you saw yourself getting carried up or coming from behind the stage, walking with your team. Act as if, envision it now. Act as if it's already happened and become it. Do it, will it, act it, act as if. It's really simple, you guys. Not long at all, once again today, no reason to be. I told my team last night on our, on our leadership, we're not going to talk all day about something that we already know we're supposed to do. We're not going to talk all day about things that we already know we can do and that we already have in place available for us to win. And if you don't believe it yet, act as if. Act as if you believe it. Find some folks who do and shadow and follow them. Ask them to mentor you. So while you're gaining that knowledge, that understanding, that belief, you can act as if. So when it shows up, when it becomes, when it's there, you're already prepared. You're not getting ready. You are ready. So acting as if is not phony. Acting as if is not pretending. You don't need to pretend that you got a million dollars in the bank when you don't. You don't have to act as if you're better than someone else when none of us are. Acting as if is an empowering tool where you can keep tapping into what you want, tapping into what you need, tapping into what you already are. So act as if right now, this very moment, before this call ends, you can already act as if and you can take action and become it immediately. So look, there's always biblical principles that I, I love to, um, to push upon and, and, and lean on for, for myself personally. So when you're acting as if, and when you're going out and you're doing exactly what you need to do, here's one for you to carry around with you. You know, Joshua 1.9 says, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So when you act as if, already understand the author and the finisher got your front and your back taking care of it for you in advance. All you're doing is putting into play and repeat what you want in your life, what more you want in your life, the greater good that you want in your life, the other people you want to help in your life as you're continuing to act as if and waiting on it to come. Now as well, Deuteronomy 31, 6, 8 says this, be strong and bold. He says, be bold. That's confidence. That's not cocky. Be strong and bold. Have no fear or dread of them because it is the Lord your God who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not fail or forsake you. Isn't that a mighty word to lean on? Understanding that while you're acting as if, or while you're building upon, while you're creating, while you're being, that you got somebody who wants you to be strong and bold. Why? Because he got your front and your back. He won't fail you. He won't forsake you. No matter what man does, no matter what your spouse does, no matter what your kids do, no matter what you do, you got a God who is so faithful that is always going to be there, willing and ready to forgive. And say, man, dust your knees off. Let's go. Dust your shoulders off. Let's get it. Be strong. Be bold. Be accepting of failure. Be accepting of the things to come. What's the learning lesson from it? And have no fear and no dread of anything. Because I'm right there for you. Man, as you fall upon this, I want this to fall upon your spirit too. In Psalm 72, 7, it says, in his days. Listen to this, glory to God. In his days, may the righteous flourish and the peace abound till the moon be no more. So until his second coming, we're just gonna go out and we're going to live the life that he created. We're gonna live the life that he designed. That's really it. And have peace and understanding and knowing that every day is not going to be a good day. Every day is, is not going to uh, be perfect. There is no perfect. There is no perfect in anything. We just serve a God who is. And so he created in us to be. 
man, I hope this really falls upon, you know, uh, everyone's ears this afternoon, this morning, wherever you are. I know it's so many people on the call where some of you, you're waking up to get on here, you know, folks in, in Korea and Japan and so many places, you know, and some of you, it's, it's 12 o'clock somewhere like it is for me too. It's five o'clock somewhere, you know, whatever the case may be, but you really want to take the time, you guys, to master and to find out what it is you want to have, who it is that you want to be, and how you can continue to be a blessing to someone else. Find yourself a mentor. Find yourself a success coach who already has what you have as you're acting as if, who already is who you want to be as you're acting as if. And then you want to follow those patterns. So that can look like you getting up earlier in the morning to work out. You getting up earlier in the morning to get on a prayer call. You're getting up earlier in the morning to make your family breakfast before you all depart for your day. It may look like you, you know, um, recreating your list and attacking it with the new suites of services that we have our hands on and mastering the mundane of the ones we've already had. Finding a mentor and a success coach may give you the ability to have a stronger connection and communicating with them and learning how to communicate effectively with your family, how to talk uh, and, and, and be more effective and more clear with your spouse, how to be more concise and clear with your children, how to be on, on your job or your workplace and be more pleasant because you already got a game plan in place of what it's going to look like. You're already envisioning your family more wealthy in spirit and money and time and togetherness. That may be successful for you. That may be freedom for you. So while you're acting as if and you're putting that in play already, I said it last week, they'll start to notice. You'll feel the change. And so will those around you. They'll be thinking, why? I'm trying to figure out why Karen don't come to the water pool no more and, and you know, and, and hang out with us and gossip. Hmm, this is different. So I'm seeing these sticky notes on Kenneth's desk of encouragement when he used to be so grumpy. Hmm, okay, I thought I was getting ready to talk, you know to John about somebody. And John said, oh, you're talking about Chris? Oh, one moment, let me go get Chris so I can have us all have a clear conversation. When you change, people around you will mm -hmm. too. It's a natural force. They won't even really wanna do it. They have to, if they wanna be in your space. The spirit that you permeate with and that you carry around with you when you're becoming because you're acting as if, it'll create this Zen moment that you see right here. Now, it doesn't mean that challenges won't come. It won't mean that, you know, there won't be a, a different testimonies, the, the, the trials that'll come that'll have you in a place of having testimonies, but coming through it, because we're all going to have to, there's nobody that doesn't go through a trial or a tribulation, but it's what happens on the other side. It's the testimony on the other side that people need to hear from you because somebody has gone through what you're going through right now while they're acting as if, and even if they're not, they don't even know the concept of acting as if, but they're going through the same thing that you are going through right now, but because you've already envisioned the other side, because you already understand that there is a testimony waiting when you come through and they like, oh my goodness, I didn't even know. And man, they still kept an attitude of gratitude. They were still happy. They weren't falling out crying and whining all over the place and telling everybody that they know their woes. And they were doing the same thing I was doing, going through the same thing that I was going through, having the same issues that I was having. What's the difference? The acting as if. Creating the life that you want. Envisioning the end in mind. So act as if.
It's really that simple. I love to say that I would get on here and say something super, you know, philosophical and, and have everybody up in arms like, oh my God, I've never heard that quote. Oh, nope. It's already right here. And so for us, we just on a daily basis need to work what's already right here. Act as if, write it down. What do you want? Who do you want to have with you? I guarantee you, I've been able to spend a little bit of time with Chris, but I know for sure Chris doesn't want to have goals and act as if without roles in mind, without his children in mind, without his family in mind, without his business in mind, without his self in mind, without his salvation in mind. Who do you want to experience with you what you're envisioning right now? Write them down, call them, let them know. It's mindset. Everything that we talk about every single day, it all is important information when digested properly and when thought of thoroughly. You can't just hear this and not write it down. You can't just hear this and just be hearers of the word and not doers of the word. You're that person that they say, oh man, always talk a great game. Man, they hype me up. I feel so good. And then they don't, you don't never see the person that's talking about it, doing it, but they always telling you what to do. Be the leader that you wanna become right now. Let your team, let your family, see you fall, let them see you succeed. And do this while you're acting as if, enroll your family, enroll your coworkers, enroll yourself into your act as if. <laughs> and that's something, Chris, enroll yourself into what you wanna have. Prime example, when I was running at a uh, regional director, I sat down with my family and I told them, hey, listen, it's a timeout because on all of all these activities, I won't be there. So if you still want to do them, great. Understand that these are this is what I have set in place. This is the goal that I have in mind. I was already acting as if I was a senior vice president running at regional director. So I had a timeout session for my family. This is what I will not be able to do for this amount of time. This is when I'm looking to have it happen. Now understand this, here's the caveat. If it doesn't happen in this amount of time, I'm gonna revamp my goals. We'll sit down and talk about what it looks like again, but then this is what's still gonna happen because I'm going to reach the goal. Now, praise God, I only had to have the conversation one time, I hit my goal. Um, however, they were enrolled in the vision. So now we're all acting as if. We're acting as if mom, honey, is getting ready to hit regional director. And then what happens after that? After reaching the goal, because we acted as if I was already one, now I need to do the work in order to make it happen. Boom, there's a reward. And after that reward, guess what happened? We sat right back down at the round table. All right, mom about to go for regional vice president. We're going to have to act as if, because this is what's not going to happen. Let's envision. I enrolled them into my vision of being a regional vice president. I told them the date. I let them see where I was, how close I was. I let them see the players in the game that were making things happen. And then it didn't happen on the date that was, that was, uh, that was set out at first. What did we do? Went back to the round table, man. Yeah, it was a good try, closer still, however, and then the second time we knocked it out. But I was acting as if from the beginning. I surrounded myself with Chris's from the beginning. I shifted that negativity out of my mind from the beginning. If it was something that made me mad, made me wanna cry, whine, scream and holler, my mentor only allowed me 22 seconds to do it. And then was like, okay, now what are we doing next? You done? Are you done? Oh, you weren't done? Okay, I'll wait. It was no time for the pity party because I was already acting as if. And while acting as if, there's other people who are looking 
for me. Belinda Baptiste was looking for someone. You are looking for someone. I was looking for someone and then tag your it, you'll be that someone. So as you, or while you act as if, create that vision within a vision that is bigger than you, that it can now help some other people, that it can now, you know, uh, be a, a benefit. We're always here to be a service. And since the time is coming anyway, and we're in the fight of our life that was last week, in honoring God and keeping him first, and understanding that with all of that, while you're acting as if it's coming, we can be it, we can do it, we can have it, but you got to start. If you guys have paid attention, every segment that I've done with you, I end with, but you got to start. You got to start. I ran track in high school. You never saw me at the line with my, you got your hands up and you in your stance. And I'm not, I'm looking at the person. I'm like, oh, I can't wait to come in second. That was never me. Who runs a race to come in last? I was acting as if from birth. Act as if. We all got things that we got to learn in order to create, in order to be. But when that shotgun goes off, are you running? Or are you sitting there looking like, uh, let me just, this is not the tortoise in the hair. That's it. That's all I have because I know you guys can already do it. I already know you are already doing it. I already know you have the right mindset. This platform alone is enough. Surround yourself with a camp of people who not just want you to win, but that want to win with you. That want to win with you. On that note, I'm done, you guys. I thank you for your time and attention today. You know, Chris, as always, I'm telling you, whenever I see your face, I just smile. It makes me so happy. You know, I love, uh, you know, um, being with, with Mr. Thomas as well and all the other leaders. Um, you just immediately created a special place in my heart. You know, you had to. I was willing to share my ice cream with you. Uh, you know, so I just praise God for this ministry that we have right here to be able to hear from leadership every single day, Monday through Saturday, in order to take our lives to another level. This isn't just about our business. It's about taking our lives to another level. If you pay attention, it's about helping you become better people, better wives, better husbands, better parents, better children, better business partners, better coworkers, better people in the grocery store, allowing somebody who only got two things in their hand and you got a, a, a whole grocery bag full of stuff, a whole cart full of stuff go in front of you. This stuff that we talk about right here helps you to do that, helps you to smile on the elevator at people <laughs> and talk to them. Isn't that the craziest thing? Why do people get on the elevator and they do this? Why do they look down immediately? Oh, I love it. I'm the one that's going to force you out of your uncomfortable. Hey, how are you? What floor? You got it? Oh, okay, great. How's your day going? <laughs> that's me because I've been acting as if already. I've been acting as if I wanted to change the world because I do. And I've been acting as if I already have because I have act as if. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, you guys, for uh, for this platform again. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity. I'm going to turn the call back over to you.